do this. Hi, my name is Ken. I'm a therapist at the St. John Clark Pain Treatment Center here in Clearwater, Florida. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the eye today. You know, many say that the eye is the window to the soul, and uh, I'm not so sure if that's the case when we take a look at it in anatomy and physiology situations, but the eye does a, a splendid job at doing a plethora of things. Um, some of the things that we see that are in, in pathology with the eye, or that might be considered uh, uh, the dysfunction of posture would be, are you one of these? Where you sit at your desk and you're looking up like that and your glasses are on the front of your nose all the time. And what that kind of creates is the use of the superior rectus muscle of the eye. And looking at this model right here, the superior rectus is right across the top of this eyeball. And that goes along and attaches to the back where the optic nerve is. And what can happen with that is if that stays in contraction too long, we could possibly have some trigger points firing to the optic nerve, which could possibly affect the way that the pupil uh, dilates and your visual is, is affected that way. Uh, the extraocular muscles of the eye, there are six of them, and they all have distinct functions, and they all contribute to rotational abduction, adduction, elevation, and uh, of those movements of the eyeball. So if we see somebody with a cross eye or with a lazy eye, we can go to a particular muscle and treat that muscle, get that muscle to relax so it's not staying in contraction, and that way that muscle will allow that eyeball to sit and function within the orbit itself. This other model here is a model of the, uh, of the cranium, and this is the eye orbit. This is where the eyeball sits into. And uh, the importance of that is, I'm going to take the, I'm going to, I'm going to decapitate this crane, uh, this cranium just a little bit so I can show you the inside portion of that. Uh, there is a frontal bone, there's a sphenoid bone, there's a lacrimal bone, there's a maxilla bone, there's a nasal bone. These are all in relationship to the orbit of the eye. All of these bones of the cranium are movable. So if there are distortions with the cranium itself, they can actually impose a little bit of pressure and constriction within the eye and the way the eye functions. So the muscles of the eye are very important. A couple of other things that uh, could affect the eye is if, if you don't have any lacrimation, which means I don't have any tears coming out of the eye. There's glands and there's a lacrimal sac that we can also affect with uh, manipulation and get those to be able to function better for you as well. So. If you are one of these persons that sits like this at your desk, and if you use a computer such as over here, a, a good way to prevent overstrain of a particular eye muscle is to bring the monitor up into a place that is level with your vision. So, what happens with the uh, superior rectus of the eye muscle is, is affect as, as well as forward head posture. So if my head is postured forward like this and I'm wearing my glasses and I try to move my rectus or I try to move my eyeballs superior, I'm already superior, they won't move. If I try to move them inferior like I want to look down because of the contraction of the superior rectus muscle, I only have limited movement of the eyeball in an inferior nature. So I need to be able to uh, correct that by manipulating a cranial bones. C1, C2 access, as well as a couple of uh, muscles of the eye, uh, which are very thin, they're very, uh, they're very purposeful, and in our next segment we'll get a little bit of an idea of how those muscles can be relaxed. Eye exercises uh, are one of the first important things that uh, some of the optometrists indicate get those muscles to relax. So in our next segment we will see how that is performed. Thank you.